Hey folks, David Molnar here. I want to talk to you today about the difference between shooting JPEG versus RAW. As many of you guys know, most of the, inter the images on the internet today are JPEGs. Every single camera in the entire world, to my knowledge, can shoot a JPEG image. And most of you guys have probably shot JPEGs, whether you've shot on an iPhone, an Android, a DSLR, or even a mirrorless camera. So why would you shoot RAW? What's the difference? What's the advantages? I've heard there's you know, disadvantages to shooting raw. Well, what I wanna do is I just wanna break it down for you crystal clear uh, what the pros and cons of shooting uh, raw versus JPEG um, actually are. So I'm gonna give you a little teeny analogy um, first. JPEG versus raw. Are you guys ready for this? All right, so you know the guy uh, that paves your sidewalk right in front of your house, you know? Um, they've gotta pour this wet cement down and eventually that wet cement is going to dry and it's going to become hardened. And at that point, you can't really change the cement. The only thing you could do is like remove it or break it up or just kind of disc discard it altogether. So once it actually dries, it's kind of cemented in there forever. This is like a JPEG, you know? Like imagine if you're putting your handprint in the sidewalk, you, you, got, um, you got to the cement before it was actually completely dry. You put your handprint in there, that handprint is cemented in there pretty much forever. You know, you can't really change it. You can't like mold the handprint anymore once it's dried. You know, maybe you could like chisel it or try to sand it down or grind it or something. But for the most part, unless you just throw away that chunk of cement, it's there, it's like that. This is what it's like to shoot a JPEG image. So, you know, you can shoot an amazing quality image with JPEG, there's nothing wrong with it. But what you're saying is, you're essentially saying, this is the way it's gonna be kind of forever, kind of final. Now you can edit JPEG just a little teeny bit, you have certain things you can do, but you don't have as much range. Uh, you don't have as much uh, dynamic range in your highlights or in your shadows. And so really it's just not as moldable of an image when you're taking it into post-production and you're trying to edit it. However, if you shoot RAW, the format RAW, and every single um, yeah, company like Nikon, uh, Sony, Canon, whatever it is, they all have their own proprietary formats of RAW. Um, but when you shoot raw, it's as if you're shooting wet cement, okay? Or at least, you know, semi-wet semi cement to where it's not like liquid, but it's, it's still moldable, okay? You could put that handprint in there and then you could probably change or alter that handprint just slightly. Um, and the beautiful thing about raw is that it never fully dries. That's why they call editing in raw non-destructible. And this is a beautiful thing because you can always go back later and mold that cement just a little teeny bit more to change things. And then you could export and finalize that image. And it's like creating another block of solid concrete, but your original a block of concrete, your raw image is edited, is, uh, edited in a non-destructive way. So it's like cement that never actually dries. So that's the main difference between shooting JPEG versus RAW. There's of course tons and tons of other things and uh, I'm not, I don't have time to talk about it in this quick free tutorial, but um, shooting RAW does take a larger file format. It'll take up more space uh, on your memory cards and on your, you know, your hard drives and all that stuff. But in my opinion, it's definitely worth it to be able to have more options later on. Thanks so much and I'll see you next time.